Reactors feature a number of engineered safety systems. These include inherent, which indicates a natural feedback that is designed into the system, passive, which in the event of an accident, no inter human intervention is needed, active, which in the event of an accident, human intervention is required, redundancy, which means that the reactor as a whole has no single point of failure, diversity, which means multiple distinct safety mechanisms are in place, physical separation, which is that which are represented by barriers that prevent release and damage, and fail safety, which is that the system returns to the safest state in the event of a failure. A variety of safety system mechanisms are available to reactors. Reactor trips shut down the reactor, usually via control rods, in the event of an emergency. Emergency core cooling provides a larger heat sink, usually through additional coolant, to the core. Post-accident heat removal is similar to emergency core cooling, but happens after the accident. It, for example, additional or, ex or external coolant pumping. Post-accident radioactivity removal is the remediation of radioactive material to disposal facility or by allowing radioactive material in the containment to decay over a period of time. Containment integrity ensures that the containment operates as intended. Humans may be exposed to radioactivity from an accident through a variety of different vectors. This image displays some of those. For example, radioactivity may seep into groundwater or it may be exposed through the air and cause an inhalation risk. Summing over all possible exposure pathways leads to an effective dose. Major nuclides that are environmental health concerns are strontium-90, iodine-131, cesium-137, and tritium, or hydrogen-3. Risk, as measured in consequences per time, is a measure of the average cost of an activity amateurized over some length of time. This length of time is typically taken to be one year. This is an actuarialist view of risk and only applies to ensembles, i.e. all people or an entire reactor fleet. We can therefore define risk as R equals CF, where R is the risk, C is the unit cost, and F is the frequency of an event. Measuring frequency is performed through the counting of historical events coupled to statistical predictors. Cost is often measured monetarily. The major caveat here is that measuring cost through US dollars may not always be the best basis for a few reasons. First, money is a medium of exchange, and so it is hard to price unique items such as a human life, historical artifacts, or particular works of art such as a Picasso painting. Additionally, cost is based on what someone is willing to pay at a fair auction. This method of establishing price fails for human lives. So, as an imperfect mechanism, cost per human life is based on lost wages and opportunity. This is particularly unfortunate if it happens to be your life. A reasonable mitigation strategy is for engineers to push the frequency of death and injury events as low as possible. It is also important to note that perceived risk is different than actual risk. Humans, in fact, have a terrible intuition around probability. We often overestimate the importance of events with vanishingly small likelihoods and underestimate the occurrence of common events. For a stark example of this, I'll refer you to what's called the Monty Hall problem. As engineers, it's important to keep the above distinction between perceived risk and actual risk in mind when communicating with the public, much of whom is non-technical. The following presents a sample engineering viewpoint for various levels of risk. At 10 to the negative 2 deaths per person year, this is equivalent to natural death, and so any engineered system should have a significantly lower death rate. At 10 to the negative 3 deaths per person year, any engineered system should consider this an unacceptably high risk and would require immediate mitigation. At 10 to the negative 4, it is still worth the cost to reduce the risk even further. At 10 to the negative 5, 
engineers and engineered systems must go out of the way to reduce the frequency. At 10 to the negative 6, this is the level of extreme natural disasters and is quite difficult to mitigate. Additionally, we can compare fatality frequencies for different forms of power generation. As is seen in this figure, nuclear power fatalities are significantly lower than fatalities from other forms of power generation.